Hello. 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 In this chapter, we want to start broadening our view of numbers to include the integers. Do you mind telling me what this is all about, Mr. What are the integers? Well, the integers are the signed numbers. They're going to include everything. They're going to include the positive numbers, the positive whole numbers, if you would, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. But we're also now going to go the other way on the number line and include the negative numbers. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, etc. And 0. Okay? So that's the integers. The positives, the negatives, and 0. Notice, the farther to the right we go, the larger a number becomes on the, on the line. Even if we're in the negatives, the farther to the right that we go, negative 1 is bigger than negative 2, isn't it, really? And vice versa, the farther to the left that we go, the smaller a number becomes. Okay, that's what we mean by smaller. It's important to note because it's going to get fusing, confusing in a little bit. Why, would, why do we even have positives and negatives? Well, we're going to need to represent things in real life. Of course, what would be associated with a number that's above sea level would be some positive number. Okay? But if we go on the other side of zero, if you would, to go below sea level, not only do we want to represent how far below sea level we are, but that we are below sea level. So we'd want a negative number, something that's going to signify that. Hence the negative. Of course, a positive number would put us above freezing. And with temperature, we may want to represent below freezing. We're used to that with a negative number. What about with money? Of course, with money, when you made money, it's a positive number. And we want a bit... Re oh, the world doesn't always look great. Sometimes we lose money. So we'll have to represent it with a negative number. Such a, and some people say you're in the red kind of a thing. Pay attention, son. This is for your own good. Now, when we work with more than one integer at a time, we're going to want to compare them. And it's critical that you understand the signs that compare them, the inequality signs. The greater than sign, then the less than sign. For instance, this would be read 5 is greater than 3. Note that the mouth is opening up to the 5. But I don't want you to memorize the signs and the directions they're going, because this could also be read not only 5 is greater than 3, but it also could be read backwards. 3 is less than 5. Now, so I don't want you to memorize those signs. This could be read 2 is less than 6, but it could also be read backwards 6 is greater than 2. So you need to know this forwards and backwards. I don't understand. Well, rather than memorizing the symbols, here's what some people do. Remember that the arrow of the inequality sign always points to the smaller number. Some people like that. What I like... I always remember that the mouth of the inequality looks like an alligator to me. The alligator always wants to eat the bigger number. So the mouth always opens to the larger number. And that's the way I'm going to look at it in the future. Now then, boy, we'll see how much you learn. Let's see if you can see what I'm talking about here. Which way are we going to put the inequality sign here? Well, 10 is bigger than 7. 7 is smaller than 10 going to go that way. I don't, want to, I don't want to get into an argument as to which sign that is. All I need to know is that that's the correct way I put the sign. Note that the alligator is eating the larger number, 10, isn't it? In this case, the larger number is 8. So the inequality sign opens to the 8 because it wants to eat the 8. The mouth always opens to the larger number. Now, in this case, it gets a little tricky, but it still works. The mouth's going to open, in this case, to negative 3. I don't understand. Well, the reason it opens to negative 3, if you look on the, num on the number line, negative 3 is to the right 
of negative 5. So it actually is larger. So you have to be able to at least either draw the number line or envision the number line. And whoever's to the right is a, quote, larger number. And of course, the alligator wants to eat the larger number. Now, who's larger, 0 or minus 3? Well, in this case, as crazy as it may seem, the mouth's going to open to 0. Oh, yes. Because if you look at the picture, you can see, or envision the picture, 0 is to the right of negative 3 on the number line. So 0 is greater than negative 3. This one's easy. Any positive number is going to be greater than a negative number. Even if we can't see 3 on the number line, we know it's larger because it's to the right on the number line of negative 5. So that's the way it works. The mouth always opens to the bigger number or the larger number. Now, believe it or not, we're going to have to define distance. It's going to get confusing. There's something I have to ask you. If you drove seven miles to school today, how far, does it, how far do you drive home? You drove seven to get here. <laughs> of course, you drive seven to go home. We're not going to say negative seven because distance can never be negative. Even if you go backwards, or upside down or something, distance can never be negative. Now you need to remember that. That's Hopefully it's obvious to you. Because when we talk about absolute value, and we're going to be needing to know the definition of that. Absolute value, the absolute value of a number is the number's distance from zero on the number line. And remember, Distance can never be negative, so it's the always positive value of a number. The absolute value, that's what that's read, the absolute value of 3 is the distance from 0 that 3 is. Well, let's measure that. That's very easy. There's three spaces. Distance can't be negative. doesn't matter which direction I went. So the absolute value of 3 is 3. Well, that's not too hard, is it? What about the absolute value of negative 4? Remember what the definition is. The absolute value of negative 4 is his distance from 0. That's 4 blocks, no matter which way you go. And distance can never be negative, so the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. Note that we're just always making it positive. If it's already positive, we're just keeping it positive. Now you may have to imagine this, because you may not be able to see it on the number line. The absolute value of negative 23 is going to be, hmm, where is it? Well, I know that it's 23 to the left, and I measure spaces in such a way that distance can never be negative. So the absolute value of negative 23 is 23, or positive 23. It's important to note absolute value. We're going to be referring to it in the future. Hmm. So don't forget that. And don't mix it up and now for something completely different. with the opposite of a number. A lot of people get confused between absolute value and opposite. The opposite of a number... is the number in the, that's the same distance from 0, but in the other direction, or on the other side of 0. Let's take a look at it. The opposite of 3, let's go in the other direction, is negative 3. That's very different than absolute value, I hope you appreciate. Absolute value can never be negative. The opposite of negative 4, now let's go in the other direction. Is positive 4, of course. Even though you can't see it, the opposite of negative 23 is the other direction, is positive 23. So opposite, I hope you appreciate, isn't always positive like absolute value is. They are very different, and you'll need to know that difference.
Remember it. Does everybody know what time it is? Let's get to the homework. Here we go.